I'm Sienna Bowles. Welcome to my channel, Learning Balance Live. Today, we are going to talk about anatomical terminology, terms used to describe bones. So let's begin. First, we will talk about linear elevations in bones. Linear elevations. We will begin with lines. Lines, for example, the superior knuckle line. Superior knuckle line and inferior knuckle line. Knuckle line. Now, you must be wondering, what is the meaning of the word knuckle? Well, knuckle means relating to the nape. N-A-P-E, nape. And what is the nape? The nape is the back part of the neck. Knuckle is relating to the nape. And what are these lines? Where are they present? You must be wondering. Well, these are the lines present on the occipital bone. Back of the neck, near the back of the neck on the occipital. Which is this part means approximately over here we can feel the occipital bone of the skull, which is the backmost part of the skull. Moving on to crests. Crests include the iliac crest of hip. Iliac crest of hip bone and spine of scapula of scapula what is this word iliac crest iliac means relating to the ileum And what is the ileum? You say the hip bone is made up of three parts. Ileum, ischium, and pubis. In these three parts, the ileum is one of the parts. And there is a crest on top of this ileum called the iliac crest of the hip bone. And what is spine of scapula? Well, in the scapula, the top part of the scapula, if you just see, then you can notice there is a spine-like structure called the spine of scapula. It is almost in the topmost part of the scapula. That was all about crests. Now we will talk about ridges. Number three, ridges. like the medial and lateral, the medial and lateral supracondylar ridges, of the humerus. First of all, what is this bone? Humerus. Humerus is the bone which makes up our forearm. This forearm is made up of the bone called humerus. And now what is the meaning of supracondylar? First, to understand supracondylar, we must know what is a condyle. C-O-N-D-Y-L-A. A condyle. 
A condyle is any articulating surface which makes a joint with another bone. That is a condyle. Any prominence above the condyle is called an epicondyle. We just add the suffix, uh, I mean the prefix epi to the word condyle. We get epicondyle. Any prominence above the condyle is called an epicondyle. And the ridges above these epicondyles, in case of the humerus over here, are called supracondylar. Anything above a condyle or an epicondyle is supracondylar, since the word supra means above. The supracondylar ridges of the humerus, there are two ridges, medial and lateral, which are above the epicondyles, the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. Those were some terms relating to linear elevations. So now we may take a look at the board before we move on to our next few terms. Now we will talk about rounded elevations. elevations. Let's begin with tubercles. Number one, tubercles. Take the greater and the lesser tubercles of the humerus. Greater and lesser tubercles of humerus. Now you must be thinking, what is a tubercle in the first place? Well, tubercle, as I say, is a rounded elevation, but what, what specifically is this? This is a rounded elevation on any bone, but not really big, very small elevation. Like over here, we can say the greater and the lesser tubercles of the humerus. Our next term in rounded elevations is number two, trochanters. And you must be guessing really well the greater and the lesser trochanters of the femur. Greater and lesser trochanters of the femur or the pie bone, which we call in common terms, that is femur. Like I said about the greater and lesser tubercles in case of humerus, similarly, the femurs have trochanters, the greater and the lesser trochanters of the femur. Moving on to Maleolus. Like the lateral and medial maleolus, the lateral maleolus of fibula, maleolus of fibula, and medial medial maleolus of tibia. Now, first of all, what are fibula and tibia? These are the two bones which make up the leg, the fibula and tibia. The fibula bears no weight of the body, whereas the tibia bears almost all of the weight of the body. Just we have to keep this in mind. The tibia has the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus of fibula are the, another kind of rounded elevation, which is malleolus. Before we move on to our few terms left in rounded elevations, you may take a look at the board. Moving on to our rest few terms to be discussed in rounded elevations. The first one is 
tuberosity. And again, tuberosity is similar to a tubercle. It is a rounded elevation, which is like giving attachments to any kinds of muscle, ligament, etc. That is a tuberosity. For example, the ischial tuberosity, ischial tuberosity, and deltoid tuberosity. Tuberosity. Is kale tuberosity? What is the meaning of the word is kale? Remember a few moments ago when I was talking about the three parts of the hip, which were ileum, is kale, and pubis? That moment, the is kale is one of the parts, and the tuberosity on this is kale is called is kale tuberosity. And the deltoid tuberosity is a very prominent tuberosity on the shaft of humerus. On the shaft of humerus lies this deltoid tuberosity, which is a triangular, like not exactly triangular with the cone shaped, but it is a kind of a like rounded triangle on top of this shaft of humerus, which makes up the deltoid tuberosity. And finally, the last term in rounded elevations is a protuberance. Oops. A protuberance is also a kind of a rounded elevation, but it's like they can consider it's like coming out of the body. For example, the nose is a kind of a protuberance out of my face. Similarly, over here we can consider the external occipital protuberance. External occipital protuberance. External, meaning it can be felt externally. And occipital means relating to the occipital bone, which is a bone in the back part of the skull. And a protuberance, I just told it was a kind of something which came out of any specific surface. External occipital protuberance. So that was all about rounded elevations. So before we move on to our next few terms, you may take a look at the board. Now we will talk about sharp elevations. Our first term is a spine or a spineless process. Spine or spinous process. And you must be guessing really well what example is spine of the vertebrae. Spine of vertebrae. Vertebrae are the tiny units which make up the spine. Now, one process means one kind of spine or a spinous process we can consider as spine of vertebrae. And lastly, in sharp elevations, we have the styloid process, any kind of styloid. Styloid. The word styloid kind of like means a pillar. So there is a styloid process of the temporal bone. Styloid process. of temporal bone. Over here, the word process does not literally mean a process, but means a kind of a mechanism in which something is occurring. 
Here, the word process means a kind of a projection or any structure. Over here, stylized process of temporal bound is a spiny projection at the temporal bound, which is at the side of the skull, approximately over here, on top of the ear. And we can understand where is the temporal by knowing the position of the external acoustic meatus. External acoustic meatus, which is one opening, which we can actually see over here, the ear. This is external acoustic meatus. This external acoustic meatus can roughly help us to measure the position of the temporal bone. And style-like process is one of the sharp elevations over here. So now you might take a look at the board. Hope you enjoyed this episode and please like, share, and subscribe my channel and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.